right, Tim Maria here live at Digital Health Summit at CS 2013. We're here with Ron Andrews with Life Technologies. Hey, how are you this morning? Good, good, Ron. So, 10 years since they cracked the genome and, and a huge amount of money, $3 billion. Right. Tell us about Life Technologies, about yourself, and then we'll go into what's happening in the future. Sure, you know, Life Technologies was one of the leaders uh, in the area of platforms used to map the human genome. And it was a, it was a hum, really tremendous project. It's probably the first time, really in the history, where government and, and, and technology companies came together to do something really pretty spectacular, right? It took us $3.8 billion and 10, almost 10 years to map the genome. Yeah. And it really gave us insight into to disease and where it's going. Now, the beauty of Life Technologies is we are a very advanced technology company. We really push the envelope on digitizing some of these technologies. So really what we've done is we've really taken the, the knowledge from the human genome and we put it in a usable format that will allow us now to advance this towards the clinic and really start to help patients uh, with that information that comes from their genome. What is the end goal with this? Where are we going with this? It's like it's moving so fast. It is moving fast, and I think the beauty of where it's going is the fact that we have so many scientists around the world that have partnered with Life Technologies with these technologies to really begin to peel back the onion of diseases like cancer so yeah. we can get to the real core of what's causing the cancer. What's the genetic driver yeah. of that cancer? Yeah. And then once we do that, we're able to paint a very nice picture of that cancer cell for the, the clinician. And our goal is really just to be relevant at that point when a cancer patient sits down with a physician uh -huh. and they need to know at that that moment, we call it the physician-patient moment. In that moment, what, it, what does that doc need to know to really help that patient, A, calm them down from their fears about yeah. the disease, yeah. because not everybody dies from cancer anymore. It's becoming more and more a chronic disease. And secondly, that we can give that physician at his fingertips every piece of information they need to make the right drug choice at the beginning, so we give that patient the best chance to get on the right drug early, and therefore really a great chance to live and maybe even be cured from the disease. How efficient are we at using the data right now? Yeah, the data is the big challenge for everyone, right? The, now we've got this chip technology, and life technology is leading the industry to the to the you know to the, the um, to the chip world yeah, yeah. for genomics. Yeah. But the big challenge is these chips put off terabytes of data that have yeah. to be crunched in real time. And so, as you know, the computing power has to really come along with us. Yeah. Um, for the first last two or three years, that computing power has lagged a little bit, but we're now starting to see it catch up. And so um, most recently, we acquired a company called Compendia Bioscience, which is a, a bioinformatics company that really has done a great job of looking at all the information around cancer that's been written and published, looking at over 60,000 patients and mapping their tumor uh, pathways, and all that data goes into a huge database. So what we're able to do now is we're able to run the ion torrent, the proton chip. We're all going to get that information. It's going to out and we're going to in real time be able to synthesize that so within wow. a day a patient will be able to go to their doctor have their blood drawn look at their tumor and then within a day we'll have those results back to the physician that's real time uh, opportunity to translate this into actionable care and that's going to move us really closer to the clinic and really where it needs to be point of care 80 percent of cancers are in the community Today they get treated at most academic centers. What we want to do to improve the cost of healthcare is really to move it out into the community so that these community docs have access to these amazing tools. What about preventative medicine? Well, obviously, these tools provide that capability, too. We've talked about cancer here, but obviously, we can do inherited diseases with this yeah. as well. And we can begin to look at things like diabetes risk and cardiovascular risk. You know, the big challenge here is we've had tools, maybe not as specific as this in the past, that help people with that, but they have to make social change or lifestyle changes, right? And that's probably the hardest part for all of us, right? You know, and uh, so I think as we think about uh, that, those type of disease and disease management strategies, our technology is going to enable yeah. docs to have way more motivation for that patient to go do something because now you got a genetic test that's telling them, look, you got a high degree of risk yeah. of cardiovascular death. We need to get you on something and get them moving. And we think it will help with compliance. It'll help with the healthier lifestyle as well. So it's just it's just amazing how fast we're moving. How how fast is it moving, and what's going to happen in the next five years? Well, what you'll see in the next five years is you'll see this chip, which is really a chip geared for a hospital, you know, more of a hospital lab. You'll see this translate into even smaller chip. So what we'll be doing in, in five years from now is we'll be taking a biopsy of a tumor, take the DNA out, map it with, with the proton chip, wow. 
And we use our compendium mathematics to pick out the 20 or 30 genes that are unique to that patient's cancer. And then what we'll do is we'll draw blood and we'll look for that same signal in the blood so that we can monitor the efficacy of the treatment real time. So we'll remove the tumor, treat the patient, and we'll see very quickly, does that signal go down? If it does, we got the right drug. And if it doesn't, then we can know real time we got to change course versus now it's six months to a year before we change this course of therapy. So that gives the patient a better chance of, and that blood test will be on a smaller chip and will actually be on an instrument that really could be used in a physician's office. So the patient can actually go to their doctor, get the blood drawn, monitor the, the progression or non-progression, we hope, of their disease, and they don't have to make this trip to a big academic center to get academic level care. Awesome. It's so exciting. It's exciting. All right. Well, you heard it here first at Digital Health Summit Live. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. Cheers.